What is DocuSend Maestro? When should you use it? And how do you use it? Those are all the questions that I'm going to answer in this video. DocuSign just released a new platform called DocuSign AIM, which stands for Intelligent Agreement Management. And as part of this new platform, they've released DocuSign Maestro. DocuSign Maestro is a tool that allows you to create multi-step workflows they can leverage different DocuSign applications, all connected in order to automate larger workflows that you would not normally be able to automate by just simply using one of those applications. But by connecting all those applications together and creating a sequence of steps that you want the workflow to accomplish for you, then you can automate things like client onboarding. In this screenshot here, for example, we can see that the first step is to verify someone's identity using DocuSign ID verification. And once that person has verified their ID, they will be redirected to a web form where they will be able to provide information that will then be used in the next step, which is the get signature step. And this means that a template in DocuSign will be pre-populated using data collected from the web form so that the signature of the document is actually easier. And then there might be other steps downstream and you can have some different routes depending on different scenarios. For example, if the envelope gets completed without any issues, then the document will be stored inside of Google Drive or OneDrive. But if one of the signatures get declined, then an email notification needs to be sent to someone so that the workflow can be handled differently. That's what DocuSign Maestro is for in a nutshell. In case you haven't watched any of my YouTube videos before, my name is Sofian Saudi and I'm the founder of Solution Consulting. I was with DocuSign before as an implementation consultant and then founded Solution Consulting, where we help organizations implement DocuSign by building templates, setting up the account, creating integrations, and training users. So if you're interested in getting our help to roll out DocuSign for use without any help, headaches and time wasted and you can book a call using the link just down below. During the call, we'll assess your workflow and suggest the best implementation approach for your organization. And if you're a DocuSign beginner, I strongly suggest that you download the DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet. You can find it using the link just down below. It will help you understand what all the different DocuSign products and how you should use them so that you can get started on the right foot. Now back to the DocuSign Maestro conversation. Let me actually give you an example where I actually think that some of our clients would benefit from DocuSign Maestros. So for example, we work with a lot of investment funds and financial services companies because they have a ton of paperwork, they're really time consuming and they want to automate it so that their customers have a better experience and they also save time as an, as an organization. Well, let's just say that you work for an investment fund and you want to streamline the process for your investor of signing up and investing their money into your fund. It's been a very cumbersome process because there's a ton of paperwork that needs to be filled out. And the way the document needs to be filled out is also conditional to the type of investor. So whether the investor is an individual or an entity, and then within the entity, you have a trust or a single member LLC or a partnership. It really makes the whole process complex because you could potentially fill out the document in a lot of different ways. And the way we currently handle this is by creating a pre-DocuSign form Essentially, it's a form that we send to the investor and that form through a series of questions determines which template the investor should fill out and then redirects the investor to that template directly after they filled out the form. So in the past, that was not possible with DocuSign forms. So we were using something like JOT forms or any other type of forms that could then redirect the user to the right form. But with DocuSign Maestro workflows, now that's possible. And before Maestro, that was not possible. The reason was that web forms were tied to one template only. But with Maestro, we can now create web forms that are not tied to a specific template, but that can redirect the user to a template or to another template. Now back to DocuSign Maestro. To access DocuSign Maestro, you want to head to the Agreements tab and then click on Maestro Workflows. If you don't see Maestro Workflows, it means that you don't have access to DocuSign IAM or that you're not on one of those DocuSign Enterprise plans. So if you're on an e-signature plan, you only get access to Maestro if you're on an enhanced plan, which means you're on an enterprise plan. So if you want to get access to IAM, you want to have an IAM subscription and all of these plans do include IAM. 
I'll do a, a separate video on the new DocuSign pricing, which honestly seems to be pretty interesting with unlimited envelopes if you're on an IAM plan. But if you do want to get access to DocuSign Maestro to give it a try, and you're not on an e-signature enterprise plan, and you're not on an IAM plan, then just go to DocuSign Developer, and you can create an account using this link here. Get your free developer account, and none of the envelopes that you will send from there will be paid. They'll be watermarked though, so don't get too excited with free envelopes. DocuSign doesn't give you anything for free. So now that you've got access to Maestro, here's where you want to go. So you want to go to Maestro Workflow on the Agreements tab, and then you want to create a new workflow. Once you're here, you want to include your participants. Participants are simply people who are going to take part of the workflow at some point. So we are going to have the salesperson sending the link to the investor, and we are also going to have the investor signing the documents and uploading a copy of their ID, as well as doing a bunch of other things. So we're going to set up those two people first, the admin, and then we have the investor. Once we've added our participants, we need to add starting variables for those participants. So we need to provide name and an email field so that we can reuse those names and emails in the different steps of the workflow so that those people can receive the notification and do anything else that they need to do. So we're going to click on add variables and text. So we need the admin email and the admin name. Now I can actually start building my first step. And so my first step, if we look here, is to send the link to the investor. So that's what I'm going to do. Set up invite, and then I'm going to configure that step. And now it's very important that you name your steps. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense when you look at this. Here, for example, nothing is renamed. So you don't really know what the step actually does but the more specific you are the better it is so that you can maintain this automation this workflow in the future i'm just going to call that step invite investor to subscribe and you want to make it as simple as possible and preferably a verb in the first tense so that you know exactly what's happening so the participant in this step is the investor so participant name is going to come from the investor name and participant email is going to be investor email. Now those starting variables will be provided by the person who is going to start the workflow in a form. I'll show you that in a minute, if that doesn't really make sense to you right now. Now, I do want to personalize the email notification. I would have liked to be able to pull in the first name of the participant. So it would say, hello, Sofian, please use the link to subscribe to our fund or something like this. We can't do it for now. Probably DocuSign will roll this out in the next release. Now, the next step, if we go back to our workflow, is for the investor to complete our form. And so I'm going to click on collect data with web form. And here I need to select the form that I want to use. So I've already built the form. And now let me quickly go to the web form so you can actually see what that web form does. So here's the web form. We're just asking the name, the email, as well as phone number. And here is where we want to know whether the investor is going to subscribe as an individual. And if it's an individual, nothing really happens. If it's an entity, then we want to know the name of the entity. And once the investor will fill out all the fields and click on next and submit, then it will be redirected to one of the two different templates that we have for entities and individuals. So in that template here, we have a document that says that it's for entities. And then this template says that it is for individuals. Obviously, my templates are overly simplified for the purpose of this demo, but typically those will be very, very complex and long documents. So now you understand the templates and forms that I'm working with. Let's go back to our Maestro workflow and finalize it. The next step will be to indicate who is going to participate in that step. And so that's going to be the investor. And then the next step here is to do the data mapping. Data mapping means that we are taking values from a previous step and reusing them in this specific step. Let me explain. In this box here, we can see all the fields that are going to be shown in the web form. And this list of fields includes the name and the email that we want to collect from the investor. So we can reuse the name and email of the investor from our previous step and feed the information into this specific step so that our investor doesn't need to provide it again. And so in the full name field of my uh, DocuSign web form step, I can use the starting variable or that the admin will have provided. And so here that's going to be investor name. And for the email address, that's going to be the investor email. Now this is optional, but the experience will be much better for the investor. I'm going to click on apply. And now I can add my next step, which is to route the investor to a specific template. So back to my workflow. 
here I'm going to add a branching rule. And as you can see now, we've got two paths. One, if the statement that I'm going to configure in my rule is true and one is false. I'm going to click on configure so that I can make a statement. And here I want the rule to check whether the option that the investor selected contains the word individual. And if it is true, then I want the investor to be redirected to a certain template. And if it's false, I want another template. If it is true, then I want to configure a get signature step. And in this specific step, I can map my participant, my investor participant to my investor recipient in my template. So this participant will be the admin and then the name. It can come from the starting variable, investor name and investor email. And then I can go to field mapping, which means that I can map the field assigned to the recipient in my template. There's only one field that the recipient has to fill out and it's the capital commitment. So how much does this investor want to invest in the fund? And so this is the field in my DocuSign template and I can pre-fill it using the answer to that same question that the investor will provide in the web form. And so that will be here, investment amount value. I'm going to click on apply to configure the step if the statement is false. So if the investor is not an individual, but an entity. The only difference in this step is that we want to collect the name of the entity and we want to pre-fill the name of the entity in our template. So I also have to map the entity field. That's it. So I'm almost done. So I've built all of these steps so far. The last step is to store the document inside of a Google Drive folder. So I'm going to select the store files in Google Drive and configure this step. And I want the document to be stored within my demo folder. And what I can do next is to configure the naming convention. So how I want the document to be saved. So let's just say that I want the document to be saved at subscription agreement. And then I want to add a variable and that's going to be the investor name because that's the individual route and then dot PDF. And here I'm going to do something that's very similar. Instead of using the investor name, I'm going to be using the entity name and that's it. I'm going to review this and publish it. So now the workflow has been built. There's a couple of different ways you can start this workflow. Okay, we can do it by logging inside of DocuSign and then um, going to the workflows and click on start. This is if the person starting the workflow is internal to your organization and does have access to your DocuSign account. But sometimes it's not the case. And in that case, what you want to do is to grab the URL. By using the URL, anyone can just fill out the information that's requested. It's not working yet, so I guess the URL is still being generated. If we had waited five minutes, then this URL would work and we would be asked to provide the starting variables for this workflow. We're going to start from here and click on start. The first thing you want to enter is the instance name. The instance name is simply something that is meaningful to you, so you can refer back to it. You can troubleshoot it if something goes wrong. So I'm just going to say that it's for the investor called, I don't know, John Smith. Now the admin name can be myself. And as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that I actually don't need the admin name and email because I haven't used that anywhere. So I'm going to go back inside of my Maestro workflow and I'm going to delete the admin altogether because I don't need those. Admin, I'm deleting. I still have my starting variables. I don't need my admin name and I don't need my admin email and publish changes. So let's click on start. And here, I no longer need to provide the name and email of the admin. So I'm going to say that this is still for my investor called John Smith. And the investor name is called John Smith. I'm going to use a dummy email for John Smith. All right. So the workflow has started. And so if I go to my emails, and this is what the email looks like. So it says, John Smith, you have a workflow to review and complete. I personally don't like this email notification at all because that's not really client facing. I could have customized the branding. Yes, but you can't change this and it's not really nice. So hopefully DocuSign will allow us to customize the, the, the look and feel of that email because quite frankly, it's not great for external users of the workflow. And here it is. So here I'm acting as the investor. I'm being brought to the second step, which is the web form. So this is the form, right? And so I click on next. And as you can see, the name and the email have already been pre-populated from that first step. Let me fill out the form quickly. So I'm going to choose entity and say that the entity name is Solusan Consulting LLC. And we want to invest $500,000. And now my form is being submitted and I should be redirected to the entity template to sign my subscription agreement as if I were an entity. And it worked because as you can see, my template says subscription for entities. And if you remember, the other template said subscription for individuals. I've also got my amount, investment amount that was brought in. 
I haven't paid attention to the formatting, but I could make sure that it was a, a comma to separate my thousands. And the subscriber name is the name of the entity. It's not John Smith, which means that the data mapping was done correctly. But for the signatory name, it is John Smith. Now I can just sign and click on finish. The next step is to save the document in Google Drive. So let's just refresh here to track the execution of our workflow. Let's, and now it's been completed. So technically, if I go to my Google Drive, I should be able to find the signed document. And yes, our document is here. You can see it's been renamed the way that we like, so we don't have to rename it. And this is how DocuSign Maestro workflow works. So I'm just curious, what do you think of it? Is this something you think you can leverage within your organization? Do you think this will help you save more time? If yes, just let me know in the comments below. And if you need help with DocuSign, you can book a strategy session using the link just down below. It will help you figure out what is the best way to implement any of the DocuSign products whether they are templates, maestro, integrations. So you can save time and just hit the ground running with DocuSign. I will see you in the next video. Till then, happy signing.